everyone. My name is Ernie Davis, and I want to teach you about President Barack Obama on roots. But we, who are we? Let's get to my introductions. We love museums and learning about Black history and love showing what we learn with others. Everyone deserves to know their history, and adults will build confidence in your children and inspire them to read stories about real life heroes and heroes. But first, let's hope everyone have fun. Listen to the speaker, email us when you have a question, and explore the picture today. And most importantly, have fun. Have fun. And finally, share what you learn with others. Now let's move on to presidents. No rules. Who is Brock? Brock Obama was born in Hawaii on August 4th in 1961. Brock, Brock's father was away and he was not around. Brock moved to Indonesia at six and at 10, Obama went back to Hawaii for a better education. What were Obama's goals? Brock graduated from high school in 1979 and went to college in New York City. He studied hard and did well. After college, he wanted to work in, with people in poor neighborhoods. He, went, he became a community organizer. He knew the best way to help was to learn the law. What did he do to reach his goals? Brock went to Harvard Law School and became the first African American editor of the Harvard Law Review. While an intern in Chicago, he fell in love with Michelle Obama. After graduation, he moved to Chicago. His dog, Bo, Worked in a White House too, but typically Bo had official duties. And how was Brock successful? In 1996, he was elected as state printer senator and changed the laws in Illinois. Next, he became a U.S. senator to change laws for the whole country. In 2004, he he gave a powerful speech at the Democratic Convention. Speaking of conventions, let's watch a YouTube about that and him giving the Democratic Convention. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper that makes this country work. It's what allows us to pursue our individual dreams and yet still come together as one American family. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Now, even as we speak, there are those who are preparing to divide us. The spin masters, the negative ad peddlers, who embrace the politics of anything goes. Well, I say to them tonight, there is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a Black America and a White America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. The pundits, the pundits like to slice and dice our country into red states and blue states, red states for Republicans, blue states for Democrats. But I've got news for them too. We worship an awesome God in the blue states. And we don't like federal agents poking around in our libraries in the red state. And that was Barack Obama's speech. And I know it was pretty sweet. <laughs> Lastly, to sum it up, in 2008, Barack Obama became our 44th president and first African American. And we can't forget Michelle Obama. As first lady, she advocated for children's health, graduated from Princeton and Harvard, helped set laws to make school lunches nutritious, 
fought for a better education for girls all over the world, and had two daughters, Malaya and Sasha with Brock. Now I know why she is first lady. And now, enough about me. Let's move on to Professor Kendall Williams. Take it away, Kendall. Thanks, Ernie. Hi, my name is Kendall Williams, and today I'll be teaching you about Misty Copeland. Misty Copeland is the first African-American female to become principal dancer with the American Ballet Theater, one of the leading ballet companies in the United States. Misty was born on September 10, 1982 in Kansas City, but grew up in San Pedro, California. She had five siblings that were her best friends. Sometimes life was easy and other times life was hard, but she enjoyed being with her brothers and sisters going to the boys and girls club after school. She often watched Nadia Comaneci, a famous gymnast. Misty joined the cheer team at her school and that is where her coach introduced her to ballet. Her coach would teach the, the team ballet steps and jumps. Her coach said Misty had a natural talent for ballet. Misty began to love ballet so much that she started ballet training. Since she started so late, she had to take beginner's class with the little kids. She kept getting better and better. Unfortunately, her mom told her she had to quit the ballet because it was taking up too much time away from the family. But Misty could not stop training for ballet. She loved it too much. Her ballet teacher let her come live with her so she could study ballet all the time. Soon, Misty began dancing in live performances. She loved the stage. In one of her performances, she won first prize, a scholarship, and appeared in the newspaper. She was so excited and proud of herself. She soon applied for the top ballet schools and was accepted to almost all of them, but she chose to attend the San Francisco Ballet School. She had dreams of going to the American Ballet Theater in New York City. She later earned a, a spot in their summer program and even a scholarship from Coca-Cola to attend for a year. This was a huge honor because there were many African American ballets, ballerinas in the program. After the ABT summer program, she did so well that she earned a spot with the studio company. She even got to take a trip to dance in China. She loved seeing the world and exploring new cultures. Misty danced with ABT for six years and became a soloist. The first black soloist at ABT in over 20 years. This was a special accomplishment for Misty since white dancers dominated the ballet world. Misty performed in her favorite show, The Firebird. The role was a very big part with two solos. The show got a lot of attention because it was still, because it was one of the first times an African-American ballerina did in such a huge role. She practiced so hard that she injured that she injured her shin. But that but she didn't let that stop her. And this is one of her favorite performances. In the spring of 2015, she danced in the lead role in Swan Lake on the Met stage. Because of her performance, she was promoted to principal dancer. She had worked so hard for so long and finally achieved her goal of becoming the first ever African-American female dance, principal dancer with ABT. Being, being a principal dancer means everyone knows her name and she gets to dance the very best parts in each ballet. It is an honor in her dream come true. Now Misty Copeland lives in New York City, but she travels home to California to see her family as much as she can. When she's not dancing, she's exploring the city, visiting museums, and eating at seafood restaurants. She wants to continue to dance in lead roles in all of the famous classical ballets. Misty thinks it is so important for dancers of all backgrounds to see a Black woman in those roles. 
She will continue introducing ballet to people who look like her. If you want to learn more about Misty Copeland, you should check out some of her books about her life, like Bunhead, Life in Motion, and Firebreak, all written by Misty herself and tell of her journey in ballet. Thank you for joining me today, learning about our hero, Misty Copeland. Now we'll show you a video of Misty Copeland dancing. Please start the video. few of my favorite books. And then here is my first favorite, Fun Heads. It's a picture of Misty. And then, and then my second favorite, Young, Gifted, and Black. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall. You're welcome. Now, that was the end of Fruits, but now we're going to announce something. On Saturday, September 25th, we will be doing Ursula Burns and James Weldon Johnson. And at 30 as always. That's everything. Take care. Bye and spread your roots.